pollution's impact on life expectancy has been studied and recorded uh, by several experts. Now, a new report by the University of Chicago has pointed out that uh, key markers on air pollution have a huge impact as far as life expectancy is concerned. While there is a huge challenge to meet certain requirements, uh, it is very important to note that uh, the greatest external threat to life expectancy actually comes from pollution. And while there are some very uh, highly placed policy ambitions as far as controlling air pollution is concerned, it's also highly unequal. The world's particulate pollution in India did drop between 2021 and 2022 and this decline in fact added one year to India's average life expectancy. The reason we're talking about this is because imagine if we did get our uh, you know, pollution problem under control or under the regulated norms, it would entail a healthier and longer life for all Indians. Well, joining me on the broadcast this morning, Tanushree Ganguly, she's the director of the Air Quality Life Index, EQLI, University of Chicago, and co-author of this report. Thanks very much, Tanushree, for being with us this morning. Um, you know, I want to ask you very simply uh, that one particular point in the report that, that really sticks, which is the fact that, you know, in that one year, presumably because of the uh, of the COVID-19 lockdown, when the air pollution levels did come under permissible limits, it added one year to the life expectancy of Indians. I think that really tells us, um, you know, what it will be like if we actually bring our pollution problem under control. Yes, uh, first of all, thank you, Rishika, for having me on the show. And I just want to open up by saying that uh, this is our annual reminder to let citizens and policymakers know what a future with clean air could look like. Yes. I mean, it's it's not all grim, right? I mean, the way we talk about air pollution, air pollution has significant impacts on human health, human life expectancy, but there is also a vision for clean air. And if we get exposed to the clean air, then of course, human beings can live longer. And that's what this report tries to back with very concrete information from across the world. Uh, and, you know, like you very beautifully summarized, I think, um, one of the key takeaways for us while we were putting together this report, of course, beyond the fact that air pollution is, uh, you know, the largest external threat to human life expectancy, but the impacts of air pollution are also extremely unequal. So, I mean, we found that if you compare people living in, you know, the cleanest parts of the world and people living in the most polluted parts of the world, I mean, people who are living in the the uh, most polluted parts of the world, they're likely to lose more than 2.7 years of their life compared to those in the cleanest parts. I think this number also increases if we sort of zoom into India. So I think there are two stories here. One, of course, it's, uh, you know, the greatest health threat. Yes. But two, also the impacts are very unequal and it's important to you know, internalize the inequality issue that air pollution also I think, so Tanushri, produces. you know, when it, comes to, uh, when it comes to the inequality issue, I think that's where the India story is particularly grim, isn't it? Because your report very clearly says uh, that people in the most polluted places are breathing six times more polluted air, right? That's one. And, uh, you know, life expectancy is being, of course, reduced. But 37 of the 94 countries are not meeting national standards. And the countries that are not meeting the national standards largely are also the most populated countries, if I'm not wrong. That's correct. So, uh, I mean, luckily, you know, I mean, if, if I sort of uh, zoom out a little bit and give you a whole picture of the statistic. So when we say that uh, 37 countries... Uh, the, the 94 countries out of the 252 countries that we have analyzed have standards. So that sort of 94 countries covers 80% of the world's population. Now, within those 94 countries, 30% of the people, they are living in regions that don't meet their country standards. Now, for instance, in South Asia, which has sort of traditionally been considered the epicenter of pollution, I mean, most countries have uh, an annual ambient air quality standard, right? Which sort of guides how mitigation policies need to be put in place. But, you know, if we look at uh, Central and Western Africa or even the MENA region, which are now sort of emerging and also our report highlights that they are emerging as sort of problematic pollution zones, there are not as many countries have standards. So, I mean, while some countries which have traditionally been considered as polluted 
are now responding with standards or have standards. Countries which are emerging as pollution hotspots are yet to have standards. You know, uh, I want to also understand from you, uh, Tanushree, as far as India is concerned, you know, we're often guilty of only talking about the pollution problem when it's actually really hard to breathe. And that typically happens in the winter months, especially here in, you know, in parts of North India, in the national capital region, particularly where we really face the brunt of the worst of air pollution, uh, you know, when it skyrockets and reaches those 999 sort of figures and everything. Around the year, we don't really seem to care about um, air pollution or talk about it. And I think the national media is guilty of that particularly. So it's interesting that we have you on the show today because this is a good time to really be able to talk about what can be done uh, to prevent us from reaching those deadly levels that we do year after year and yet seem to find no solution for it. What do you think is a good starting point to solving the problem? Right. So before responding to your question, I just want to highlight that uh, the reason why we put out this report is for people to realize that air pollution is not, you know, a very episodic problem or it's right. not a seasonal problem. This report takes into account long term exposure to pollution level. We look at annual exposure to pollution levels and then we compute the impact on human life expectancy. So why, you know, we've sort of internalized that air pollution only yes. sort of increases during those winter months. That is not the case. The truth is that we are exposed to unsafe levels of pollution throughout the year. Now, on to your question about, you know, what can we really do? I think history tells us and examples from across the world, whether it's the US or China or Japan tells us that Countries have not been successful in reducing their pollution without forceful policy action and deliberate efforts towards enforcing standards. Yes. And when I say standards here, I mean ambient air quality standards. I mean emission standards that exist for industries as well as vehicles. So unless and until there is deliberate effort toward ensuring that these standards are being enforced yes. on ground, we will not be able to solve the pollution problem. You know, I want to just ask you a very specific question. Uh, when we talk about air pollution, China is now cited as a success story. Uh, they've really been able to sort of turn the narrative around as far as air pollution is concerned. The United States has done it. Europe has done it. Why do you think a country like India uh, finds it particularly hard to do? I mean, we are the worst. I mean, our pollution levels are completely off the charts. We're not even talking about coming within the normal range. I mean, you know, as far as India is concerned, and like you very rightly said, we may wake up to it when we actually physically can't breathe and therefore talk about it, but it's a year-round problem. Why do you think India is not being able to put a cap on it? So I would like to highlight here that India has a national clean air program. Yes, we right? do. And if you look at the national clean air program, our sort of estimations tell us that if India were to reduce its pollution by, you know, the 20 to 30 percent mark compared mm. to 2017 levels, Indians could gain um, up to 2.1 years in life expectancy, particularly in those 100 plus cities, yes. which are sort of covered by the NCAP framework. And that's what exactly I'm trying to say. This is a policy target which already exists. There is a direction towards which, which India needs to work. And all we now need is forceful implementation of this policy. All right. So, well, I think implementation in a certain sense boils down to political will and, of course, the will of the people. It's time that we hold those in power accountable and ensure that things that exist on paper actually, uh, you know, translate into concrete action in helping India uh, solve the air pollution problem. Because like Tanushree said, there are countries now that have successfully managed to turn it around India has the necessary um, literature, it's on paper, the research is all there, uh, the plan of actions are all there, it's only a question of making sure that they are implemented. After all, your and my life depends on it now. Thanks very much, Tanushree, for joining us this morning.